Hey everyone, and welcome back to the N-Express Nintendo Podcast, the official podcast of Goombastomp.com. I'm your host, Cameron Daxon. With us, we've also got Mark Kalaroff. Hello there. And also joining us is Campbell Gill. Hello, everybody. And we have a very special guest today, Celia Schilling, the marketing director of Yacht Club Games. Celia, why don't you say hi? Oh, hi. Thanks for having me. Happy to have you. What a pleasure. So uh, the latest game published by Yacht Club, Cyber Shadow, just came out, uh, I believe, yesterday at the time of this recording, right? Yep. <laughs> uh, how are you feeling? Tired. I uh, know. I'm <laughs> very excited. Um, yeah, yeah, we just got done with an AMA. Um, uh, Arne, the creator of Cyber Shadow, joined us for that, and like the team was answering questions. And we've been just really, really enjoying the energy of the fans and the release and all the fun content we've been putting out about it. It's It's been fun and it's been great. And yeah, so I'm happy and tired. Still fast. Happy, ha- <laughs> happy, and, happy and tired, I think, is a very reasonable place to be right now. I imagine you've been pushing pretty hard uh, up until this, this release. Yeah, it's but it's been great. It's been really fun working with Arne on like his vision of how he wants the marketing to be for Cyber mm. Shadow. So it's it's been a great experience. That's great. Well, congratulations. It seems like the uh, reception has been, uh, I mean, not no spoilers, but it seems like reception has been very positive so far. Yeah, it really has. And like, we're really thrilled to see that. Like, we definitely enjoyed working with Arne, um, like as his progress through uh, creating Cyber Shadow was. And um, it's really nice to see that people appreciate his hard work. Uh, it's It's been really great. I was really scared that people were going to be like, oh, it's too difficult because they're not used to like the 8-bit challenge. Or they'd be mm-hmm. like, 3 out of 10, too much ninja. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, wow, if anybody says that, that's not a legitimate review. Let's be honest. Um, 10 out of 10, more ninja is what I would say. <laughs> Heck yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, Campbell's the indie games editor for Goomba Stomp, and he actually reviewed Cyber Shadow for the site. But all three of us have put uh, <laughs> a good amount of time into it over the the past couple of days um we've all been really enjoying it um campbell do you want to kind of uh i mean you tell me man you want to kind of take it away with some questions how do we want to do this Mm -hmm. yeah i can definitely take it away right now um so i think to to start out with like i've like mentioned i got a few questions prepared up here um Mm -hmm. so to just kind of start out for any of our listeners who might not be entirely aware of what cyber shadow is all about could you please give us like a quick breakdown of what Cyber Shadow is, because, like, maybe a a quick little sales pitch of it, perhaps, uh, give people an idea of what the game is. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, so Cyber Shadow is a 2D ninja action platformer game. Um, It has a pulse-pounding soundtrack, and it's very um, faithful to classic 8-bit gaming and the classic (laughs) challenge that goes along with it. Um, It has a kind of, I guess, more serious tone story, because Shadow, um, the main character um, of Cyber Shadow, uh, he basically like is awoken into a world that's been destroyed and it's up to him to figure out, like piece together like what happened to make Mecha City fall into ruin and see if he can save his ninja clan. So one thing that um, I was curious about um, is we talked about how um, this was the latest game published by Yacht Club, but it's not just the latest game. It's really like the first big move for Yacht Club as an independent publisher. So I, I want to ask about the, the process of starting that what was it about cyber shadow that first caught yacht club's attention what was it that got you working with cyber shadow to publish it and uh, how did the collaboration between yacht club and the developer mechanical head studios first come about yeah okay so basically how it started is i think i don't know which of um our team like first uh, saw cyber shadow but i know one of us saw it on twitter and was like hey that looks awesome, and then showed the rest of us, and we were like, that looks really cool. So I think we shot out an email to Arne, being like, hey, like, you know, we're Yacht Club Games, and, uh, you know, we'd love to help you do this, like, we want to do cool things with you. And at first he was like, no, and we're like, oh, okay, well, let us know what you think. And um, then uh, over time, Arne, like, I think it was either we reached out to him again, I'm not sure, like, the exact story, because it was a little while ago, but um, we ended up deciding, like, collaborating together on it. And the whole game is made by Arne, but we did like provide some of our insights of um, our experience making games ourselves, and gave him kind of pointers on things on, you know, keeping things fair for the players and making it teaching experience in the beginning. And um, we shared our insight with him and yeah, he did a lot of really great things. So I guess in short, that's how Cyber Shadow came to be. And we're really excited to have worked with him. 
that's oh. what that's incredible. Not, not to not to interrupt you, Campbell, but uh, so as the as a marketing uh, a marketing manager, so is is that like somebody's job to just like comb Twitter and Reddit for like stuff like this to kind of, you know, kind of scoop them up? Is that like a thing? Um, it's not really a designated job because I don't think we all got together and we're like, let's publish like a heck ton of games. Like we're like, no, um, it was kind of <laughs> one of those things it. where it like we saw that it kind of fit of like things that we really enjoy ourselves. Mm. And not only did we want to play it, but we wanted to, you know, help them out and see if we could help make this like into something like amazing. So it's, it's, it's more of like yeah, a, yeah. if we spot something, hey team, what do you guys think? We're very collaborative with like with each other. So Mm-hmm. Yeah, we just talk it out and be like, yeah. Ooh, wow. It sounds like a very case by case kind of basis then. Like it's not part of a, a coordinated strategy. It's just seeing what gels with you guys mm-hmm. then. Wonderful. Well, that actually transitions perfectly into the next thing that I was curious about asking because it's been mentioned before in previous interviews and updates about the game that the relationship between Yacht Club Games and Mechanical Ed Studios wasn't exactly like your typical just publisher and developer relationship. It was a bit more collaborative. So could mm-hmm. you tell us a little bit more about the level of collaboration on Cyber Shadow and how much influence did Yacht Club have over the development process? Has your input resulted in any like significant changes in the game from the time you start working on it up to release? So that's a very good question. So when we had started working with Arne, he had a great, like a great majority of the game finished. And it was more of tweaks and just like advice on like level design, because like with certain publishing, you know, you can just take the game as it is and you just like throw it out in the world and like, you're like, there you go. But like, we like to have a hands-on approach, you know, like we treat it like how we would market our games, but with the creator's vision. So it's one of those things where we did give advice um, on certain levels. We did review leveling, giving him feedback. And I am like marketing wise, we cultivated his vision to help push it out. And yeah, <laughs> that's, I guess that's what kind of differentiates our experience and our collaborating with him. But like with everything, like level design and all that, like Arne has his final say of how he wants something. And we, we agreed, so we went with it. Yeah, I would say it's a, it's a very meticulously designed uh, experience like you can definitely feel the creator's hand um, mm-hmm. all, all the way throughout I think yeah wow. so it, it really sounds like it it was collaborative in the in the sense that you were that Yacht Club was offering a lot of feedback on it but it was the creator's vision that shone through in the end it wasn't like you were taking over the game it was very much not a Yacht Club game per se as much as it mm-hmm. was Mechanical Head Studios then yeah, like it's Arne's game. Arne made it, and you know, as li- like a like a best friend. Like when you go to your friend for advice, and you're like, hey, like does this flow correctly? And it's like, or you're like, oh, hey, should I go do this? You're like, mm, maybe not exactly like that, but maybe this. And it's still the same game, but it's like slightly, you know, a little tweaked. I love that. What a, what a what a great uh, what do you call it? A metaphor. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that thing. <laughs> We're all yeah, writers one, here. One, one of them. Thing. Yeah. Good yeah. Words. <laughs> That's great. Well, I, I actually want to ask a little bit a little bit more about that um, that kind of expertise that Yacht Club offered um, in the game, because Yacht Club Games really does know a thing or two about making retro style platformers. So I, I want to ask a little bit more about the lessons that Yacht Club might have learned, you know, throughout um, creating Shovel Knight and all its follow ups. And then how did those apply to developing or uh, publishing Cyber Shadow? Were there any like specific Specific lessons where like oh we learned this from making the plague knights campaign and then we realized that this would be a great lesson to apply to um when talking working with arne about cyber shadow yeah that's that's actually also a really good question so for that um something to keep in mind is that like our team we all like all have previous game experience so it's not just like oh we like a post-mortem of shovel knight it's like you know, taking everything you've learned and everything you know about game design and applying it to whatever project you're working at. I believe that experience stacks. So um, using like the judgment and knowledge of like our team and our specific um, like categories of like level design and and, like how things should flow, um, I guess applied to advising for Cyber Shadow. Like I know a lot of our team, like when designing like tutorials, it's better like from our point of view to teach a player by having them play through it rather than just saying, hey, press this and then go. So um, I can't exactly speak like, you know, from the point of view of like each of my colleagues helped advise or um, gave feedback on that. But it's definitely one of those things where, you know, experience stacks. So we we try to, 
we know we, we try to give the best advice as we can and as well as um what we like to see and play through with games so it's like what feels good as a gamer um as well as a developer so as you're uh you know helping helping with the the process of getting this game out the door i imagine you guys are also uh you know you're working on the game but you're probably also playing games at the same time um is there anything that you were sort of playing and uh i don't know anything that was like any sort of uh i know there's like a, a lot of stuff coming out this past winter but is there anything that we're kind of like touching on as as a touchstone or anything like that as you were uh working on getting this game out the door um, I think everyone plays games like for enjoyment. Um, but as for like game research, I don't really think so. Um, I would have to ask my colleagues. It's more of like since RNA had already had like a majority of the game done, it's not like we took inspirations personally for working on uh, Cyber Shadow with him. But uh, to enjoy ourselves, yeah, like ton we have game playing time where we literally play um, like different games that we enjoy during lunch. So like oh, awesome. I was playing Link to the Past, like, or Monster, uh, sorry, what is it? Sorry, uh, Dragon Monster Warrior, like, on my Game Boy. And, like, that was really fun to oh, me. Oh, man. <laughs> your your, hold on, your Game Boy, not your Switch. Yeah, not my Switch, Hell my yeah. Game Boy. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. a huge retro gamer, so it really it really fits in that I'm, like, helping marketing Cyber Shadow, which is, like, an 8-bit classic game. Yeah. And, like, we made Shovel Knight, like, and that has, like, a retro style to it as well. So I guess, it kind of just works. You spoke to both Cameron and I right there with the games we were talking about. Cameron's a big Dragon Warrior guy, and I absolutely love A Link to the Past, so it's amazing that those games were ones you were working with then. Yeah, sorry, sorry yeah. Mark, you're left out in the cold. Yeah, I know. I, I haven't really <laughs> dug into either. <laughs> well, hop to it. But yeah, that's like nothing related to um, Cyber Shadow. That's more of like me being like, oh, I need to beat the Starry Night Festival. Like, it's important mm -hmm. to me. <laughs> that's awesome. I will ask, though, while we're on the topic of uh, retro difficulty um uh -huh. cyber shadow retains one difficulty when you start and i found this interesting because were you guys scared that players would approach this and be like there needs to be an easy and a hard mode because cyber shadow is a difficult game it's not i wouldn't say it's as difficult as like the original ninja gaiden trilogy especially those later games but it's certainly on that level where it's like castlevania maybe yeah, like I was personally a little scared. <laughs> mm. People be like, oh man, it's too hard. But the thing is though, is that it is difficult, but it isn't cruel. Uh, one cool thing that RNA included is that like, there's no like continues, you know what I mean? You've unlimited yeah. lives, just keep going. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of modern conveniences that we included also. We also made sure to have like a lot of health. So if you needed it, it's available to you, but um, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that you can just kind of, like, there was a couple challenges where I was like, I just got to kind of brute force this thing. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> um, there was definitely a, a couple of those where it's just like, I just got to kind of bash my way through here. But, I, you know, but I was able to do that. So it's like, prop, props to you guys for, uh, props to Arne, I guess, for uh, for including that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, well, you know, this is, um, we love talking about games in general here, but this is specifically a Nintendo show. So I really got to ask about the creation of the Switch version of uh, Cyber Shadow. I saw actually in a recent interview that uh, Arnie was talking about how Yacht Club really enabled Cyber Shadow's release on Switch, as well as some other platforms. So could you talk about the decision of bringing the game to more platforms and specifically targeting Switch in particular? Um, I wouldn't say that it's particularly like just targeting like Switch, um, but we do think that, okay, sorry, I'm trying to think how to like phrase this because it's not like we look at all the platforms and we're like, yes, this, no, that, and uh, emphasis on this. It's more of like who appreciates indie games, all platforms do. And mm -hmm. what's great about um, being a position of a publisher is that not only can we give some like input in the game, but we can also i um, help advocate for it and we do have a relationship with nintendo playstation and xbox as well as like steam and and like humble bundle and uh, and gog so we have like all these relationships set up so it was able to like help be like arne like this is what you could do for publishing on like all these platforms and it's a resource that's available to you so i think it was more of like helping opening the doors rather than like a specific focus on a certain one, like, hey, Arnett, you need to do this one type thing. If 
that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that does make sense. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely great to target, you know, all the platforms as well. Um, yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for answering that. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, now that we're talking again on the um, talking about the Nintendo version of uh, one thing that I'm actually um, curious about as well is something that you alluded to earlier in the sales pitch for the game is the soundtrack of it. Mm -hmm. and it's absolutely one of my favorite aspects of the game this the the soundtrack is amazing not just in just the fact that the the melodies are great it's just really catchy it got stuck in my head a lot but it's also really faithful to like nes sound fonts in a lot of ways but at the same time it also has some modern production that i noticed i like uh lifted a level above the soundtracks on like the nes and it was like its own modern creation really mm -hmm. and another thing that i noticed as well is that it is uh it's not composed, but it's produced by Jake Kaufman, who is the um, who is the composer behind Shovel Knight. So I wanted to ask about the creation of the soundtrack and how the team arrived at that specific sound that you had there, uh, as well as the collaboration between the original composer and uh, and Jake Kaufman. Okay, so for that, there's actually a little bit I guess I need to correct you on. So Jake initially was in, like going to work on the project with um, Enrique, who's the the creator of mm, the soundtrack. Okay. But um, Jake actually had his involvement um, end up being a little bit less than what was initially announced. So he ended okay. up working on, I think it was, he worked on like the trailer, I think for the stage one song. And then from there, um, it ended up being that Enrique just took over and just helped like produce and create it. But um, Jake is amazing. Um, I think his other name goes by Vert. Um, I used to know him as Vert, or mm -hmm. know of him as Vert, so it's weird to call him Jake. But anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, he's extremely talented, and he's awesome, and we're really happy that he was able to work on um, that initial um, announcement, uh, like, soundtrack. But, um, yeah, it was Enrique for, like, everything else. Ooh, wow. Okay, well, that's mm -hmm. amazing. Um, thank you very it's... much for the correction there. I caught that on... Uh one of the storefront pages um, that I saw a while back, um, actually just like a few weeks ago, I believe. But, um, well, thank you very much for correcting that, though. At any rate, Enrique did an incredible job with the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. And yeah, uh, we ended up having to revise that a little bit because usually when you submit like certain things, you know, to platforms, it's like way in advance. So it's no no fault to you. Mm, okay, wonderful. So if I can if I can jump in here, I'm, I'm, were there any other... Um... I'm just curious during during the process anything else like that that you had to kind of like oh shoot like we have to adjust this thing like whether that was in development of the game itself or anything kind of on the marketing side where it was like oh shoot like we had it kind of going this way but we have to you know be flexible and change is there anything else any hurdles that were you had to overcome hmm. that's a good question i'm just curious four hurdles <sighs> I'm like, what can I talk about? I'm kidding. This is the Cyber Shadow expose. Let's do it. Whoa, all revealed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shadow's name's not really Shadow. Um, I think it was like one of those things where, uh, no, his name is really Shadow. I'm not, let's not cause any rumors. Um, I think <laughs> it's one late. of those things where it's like small things where I was like, is Legion's name Elgion or Legion or like, it was just like small things like that because when communicating with Arne, um, you know, he, he lives in Finland. And so I typically talk to him during text. So it's like, you know, on, on Slack. So it's like, okay, wait, pronunciation wise, I'm like, can you write phonetically how I'm supposed to say this so I can correct myself? But like, that, that's mainly the marketing side of things or we'll be like, oh, this art would be really cool. Let's do it this way or whatever. But um, as for like the game creation, I, I wouldn't say there'd be like huge switches that they told me about. <laughs> Usually mm, with marketing, sure, they're sure. like, okay, here's the finished product, Celia. You're allowed to right, make your gifts. Right. You're allowed to make your copy. Go for it. Um, so I hope that uh, provides some insight. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I was I was just curious. Like uh, I, mm -hmm. I, I I think something that all three of us are are interested in is kind of the kind of the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. of game development so so i'm just always curious to hear about like oh did anything like was there anything in the in the production of this game that was uh, unusual or uh, or different absolutely so there's one question actually that, that just came to mind you were talking about uh, things like the names in the game and it reminded me of how 
The Cyber Shadow is really unique in that it does have not a complex story, perhaps, but it has a deeper story than I was like expecting for this kind mm -hmm. of retro style game. It really does kind of call back to something like Ninja Gaiden. Can you maybe talk a little bit about the decision to present that kind of story in this kind of game in a style that's typically known for not having stories with such a, an amount of, say, lore behind it? You know what's actually interesting about that? Um what you guys like get in Cyber Shadow currently is only 25% of the story that like Arne had written for it. What? Yeah, he pulled back so much. Um, that might be a behind the curtain thing. Um, yeah, That's Arne has, about, has so much backstory <laughs> for uh for Cyber Shadow. I remember like we were working on the character profiles for it, and he was, I was like, okay, I was like, Arne, tell me more about like Shadow. Like, what does he like to do for fun? And he was like, yeah, like you know, Shadow. You know, obviously he. He has a like a sensitivity to essence but before he went to the dojo where he met master um he went on a journey of solitude to make sure he wasn't being corrupted like there is so much to these characters Whoa. that um a i'm revealing to you um b <laughs> um <laughs> that you guys like will like should know about but we'll see we'll see if uh, our neighbor wants to do a tell-all so you guys can learn more mm. You see, I was going to ask if there were any more details you could share about that, but it sounds like it's squarely in Arne's camp at this point about what kind of lore we reveal now. <laughs> I know, right? Like, I, I want him to. It'd be really cool to, like, release something, but Arne needs to sleep. He's had a very long run, so <laughs> maybe we can Let ask Arne... that of him at another time. <laughs> Let Arne sleep. Let's get yeah. that trending. <laughs> well, after he sleeps, I do have to ask, are we going to see more Cyber Shadow content? Are we going to see post-DLC? Uh, oh, that would be so cool. So right now, <laughs> it's not in the pipeline. I am, once mm. RNA takes his long slumber, his hibernation, um, until summer or something, <laughs> I don't know, um, and like emerges and then lets me know, hey there, Celia slash marketing team. Um, it slash yacht club games like i would like to make more but right now like he hasn't told us that so i'm gonna say no <laughs> mm. i do want to ask because okay so the last time someone from yacht club games was on the show mm -hmm. um our boss rick interviewed the creator of shovel knight and he asked the creator of shovel knight if shovel knight can appear in super smash brothers and he campaigned about this and he also asked if shovel knight can get an amiibo since nintendo at the time had been talking about third party amiibo and I know that for, in this case, for Cyber Shadow, that's more so of an unlikely circumstance. But um, how about working with um, Fangamer and all these different companies? Will Cyber Shadow have that type of merch? Um, yeah, so I can't say, yeah, as, as you stated, like, I can't say, like, if there would be a Cyber Shadow Amiibo, that'd be awesome. Um, <laughs> I would love to see Cyber Shadow everything. Cyber Shadow waffle makers, I don't know, uh, socks. Um, Cyber Shadow the <laughs> flamethrower. Right? <laughs> toasters, let's go. That would be so cool. Like, can you imagine, like, a little, like, Legion mittens and, like, I don't know, a master hat? That'd be cool. Oh, my gosh. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah, Arne, I've talked about merch before, like, because I, uh, I, I help with the Club Games for licensing, like, when we do work with Fangamer and, like, all the other uh, companies that are our partners. Um, I would love to see some stuff. Um, when something's in the, the pipeline and I'm allowed to announce it, I'll definitely let you guys know. But yeah, I would love to see like a Cyber Shadow toaster. That'd be like the coolest thing. Mm, I would get so two. You, 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 you heard it here first, folks. Uh, Cyber Shadow confirmed for Smash. It's <laughs> oh my official. Gosh. <laughs> it's ha <laughs> uh, no, that's, that's not how I wish, but no. Right. <laughs> well, now that you allude to it, though, um, I'm not going to ask about any more merch or anything, but one thing that Shovel Knight has become known for is a lot of crossovers. Yeah. And Shovel Knight's been it, yeah, just about everything, right? Um, and mm -hmm. It's amazing. But, um, and we've already seen a crossover between Cyber Shadow and Shovel Knight with the Amiibo content in the Switch mm -hmm. version of the game. Is there a possibility for any more, say, Cyber Shadow and Shovel Knight crossovers, or perhaps Cyber Shadow crossovers in other perhaps games that Yacht Club would publish or any other, um, just any other games or other media in general. That would be really cool. Um, so, so I know, yeah, I agree. So, uh, Shovel Knight's like literally in everything. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, for, for Shadow, it's also dependent like on Arne, because there's a lot that goes into collaborations. Like it's not just like a, hey, can we do this? Yeah, throw them in. Um, there's actually like a huge like licensing process of them being allowed to use the IP and 
on brand guides of making sure that it falls in like the right, uh, I guess, aesthetic. Like there, there's a whole lot that would go into it. Um, it's kind of, I guess, up to RNA. It would be really cool to see Shadow pop up in a bunch of places um, and become like, I don't know, like a sim or something. That'd be awesome. Um, but until then, <laughs> until then, uh, there's none in the pipeline for right now, but you know, you never know the future. Like, what would you guys like to see Shadow in? Ooh, I want to see him on a t-shirt. But, yeah, uh, I meant games, but that too. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I t-shirt the game. T-shirt yeah, the t-shirt maker.com. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know, it'd be cool. I mean, obviously, you know, 2D platformer kind of stuff would like fit that aesthetic it might be cool to do like some kind of ninja crossover with something like the messenger i know that had some dlc somewhat recently um that might be kind of interesting but yeah i don't know um what else would be cool to see going into the ninja crossover i will say Mm. this this is such a reach but i know that the um the xbox version of shovel knight had the battle toads and the ps4 had kratos but Mm -hmm. i would love to see um ryu not even going to try and pronounce his last name from ninja gaiden (laughs) oh my gosh (laughs) That would be They're all cool. just being ninja bros, hanging out, doing cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, mm. would they be ninja bros or would they be ninja rivals? Battle the ninjas Ooh. for the master. Huh? That's huh? what I'm saying. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> did, did we just did we just invent the sequel right now? <laughs> Coming soon to a <laughs> console near you. The ninja wild... bros or rivals, but as a big question mark. So you're like asking yourself too, and mm, like makes, I don't know. makes you think. <laughs> Ninja Rivals honestly sounds like it could be like a fighting game or something as well. Like so- Nin- Nin- Ninja Rivals sounds like eShop shovelware. Mm. Oh my god! <laughs> it does. And I mean that in the <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Ooh, a visual novel. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, I don't this know if you guys saw, up. but uh, speaking of visual novels, as an April Fool's joke, Arne created a Cyber Shadow the dating sim. He made screenshots of it and he sent it to me, oh my and gosh. I was pretty obsessed. It was really funny. Oh, that's incredible. No, I haven't seen that, but now I'm going to look it up. Yeah, it's, it's in deep, uh, like, you keep on scrolling on his page on Twitter, you'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see a, uh, a comic book of the game's story. I think that would be really cool. Or a yeah, manga in, like, that mm-hmm. Japanese style. Yeah, get oh, some I of that deep that. lore. I know, right? We gotta have 26 volumes of it. It'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. Um... Oh, I'm sorry. Now, now we're like wildly off track. I, I, I'm sorry. I think, I think we all we all just got excited about uh, about the potentiality of uh, more Cyber Shadow in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, Cam. We'll go back back to you. Yeah. No, that's that's great. Those were actually my like last strictly Cyber Shadow related questions. Um, I had mm-hmm. a few that were more like general yacht club related stuff. But before we get to that, did either of you guys have any more questions about Cyber Shadow you wanted to get to? Yeah, um, do you have a favorite, uh, Celia, a favorite, I guess this could go up to everybody, uh, like a favorite boss and or uh, ninja upgrade, ninja tool, I mean? Ooh, okay, so boss. I don't know if I like want to give things away because it's a little late That's true, game. the game did just come uh, out, so perhaps we can speak in general terms. Um, okay, if you guys have seen a trailer, there's this really cool dragon that's very difficult and it mm, pops out of mm-hmm. the water. I wonder who it can be. I don't know, stumble <laughs> in it when you play the game. Um, I like him because he was really fun. Well, I had a really hard time playing with him. I'm playing Me too. against mm-hmm, him. Yeah. Uh, I died so many times. Me I'd love too. to pretend that I was like like super great at, at Cyber Shadow, but even though I'm a retro gamer, like I love my SNES and I love playing NES and like a bunch of you know classic games, I had such a hard time. <laughs> playing cyber shadow but anyways i died a billion times but i really enjoyed the aesthetic of that certain dragon that i'm referring to mm-hmm. so um yeah i like that and then move wise charge blaster um have you guys ever gotten that upgrade mm-hmm. oh yeah oh yeah, yeah against I'm... against that against that very dragon hey oh man <laughs> <laughs> realized that yeah that that fits. Okay, well, anyways, um, I like how I was like, I'm not going to say spoilers, and then I say the move. Um, Oops. Anyways, I like that one because, well, A, it's cool, and then B, like, when I was making assets for the manual, um, I just thought it was really funny to make it for that one. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> Those are my favorite. What are your guys' favorites without giving too many spoilers to your readers uh, slash listeners? There, 
there's a we okay. I'm this is a slight spoiler, but not really. Uh, there's a weapon mm -hmm. called the Swag Blade. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> which uh, just the name alone uh, it just rockets it to the top of the list for me. But uh, I found that weapon extremely useful in a couple of specific situations where I was like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that I have this. Um, so yeah, that's definitely one of my one of my personal faves. Mm -hmm. I have such a basic response, but I love it to death, and that's the wall jump. I just oh, yeah. love oh, yeah. wall jumps in yeah. games. <laughs> yeah, every every yeah every every game every game should have wall jumps. I know it's a controversial opinion, but I'm just gonna say it. Mm. It it really does change the way you play the game once you get it, and mm -hmm. it makes it more of like a, a a bit more of like a versatile kind of experience. You know. Oh yeah, definitely. It's crazy how much the game changes uh, as you're playing it, and you get the more abilities, and you it becomes this more like high speed level skill. That, that one of my favorite upgrades was the dash that you get. Mm -hmm. later. That changes everything. I had a it was a little tough for me at the start to get used to like doing a little double tap on the stick to do that. But then once I got the hang of it, it was amazing. It actually made the game a lot easier once I actually figured out how to use that properly. Um, Ooh, it's amazing. Campbell, yeah. I, I gotta, I gotta ask. Okay. So Celia. Okay. So this is a question for both of you two, Celia and Campbell. <laughs> okay. yeah, Campbell, perfect. you said you use the sticks to play this game. Yes. Which is insane. Versus a D pad. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? What's, uh, what's, uh, what's, go what's going on here? Oh, I've been, I've been outed. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's that's hilarious to me. No, I oh, never man. would have even con considered using the sticks wow. to play this game. I, I actually alternated between the two, and strangely enough, that that might have been part of the issue, the reason why I had uh, trouble doing that. I mean, yeah. That's okay. fascinating. Yeah. That is fascinating. I think the reason why I've actually tended to use the sticks more lately is because when I play on Switch, the D-pad is not the greatest. So even in mm. more retro-style games, I've taken to using the control stick because the disjointed buttons on the Joy-Con, they still kind of throw me off a little bit mm -hmm. in terms of like um, things like doing angled stuff, you know? Um, That's fair. Mm -hmm. so I Confirmation have... that Campbell does not own a pro controller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. I was about okay, to say. well, I do own a pro controller, but I play 90% portable, and I hold it in ah. my hands, so hey. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I got I got to defend myself here and now. You guys are all turning on me. Um, <laughs> so, I, I didn't so mean I to just, turn this into. No, the, it's go perfect. Ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Go, Celia, go ahead. But buddy, uh, just so you know, we do have a controller compatibility guide on uh, yachtclubgames.com for Cyber Shadow. So uh, if you ever want to turn in those uh, Joy-Con sticks and play with something else, there are a couple other options. You can use. <laughs> Incredible. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> I, 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 th I think for me, w whenever I see, like, like visually, when I see a game that looks like Cyber Shadow, mm -hmm. I'm instantly transported back, you know, 20 years ago. I'm like, oh, yeah, this this needs to be played with a D-pad. Like, it just, it's something my brain tricks itself into being like, oh, yeah, you you must play this on a D-pad. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's illegal to not, but, you know. Okay. It might be, I know Campbell Arrested. might be breaking the lie. I hate to say it. Um, I will say, I actually... <laughs> How many times did I play through Shovel Knight? I played it on Wii U and 3DS. I probably played it like three or four times. But for some reason, I don't know why, but Shovel Knight is the one exception where I preferred using analog over the D-pad. Mm. And I don't Am know, I maybe it's because of like the, the, the downward shovel. Maybe it's because of that in the air. But mm -hmm. I don't know why. But Shovel Knight was always the one game where I just did not use the D-pad. I mean, it's okay to be wrong about things. I think that's fine. <laughs> like, as, l as long as you learn from it, I think that's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel that. Because I feel like I did use the sticks, like, um, for when I played King of Cards. But I think that's also because, like, during the Joustice battles, it just made more sense to me. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But, so I can understand your standpoint, but, like, also the D-pad. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's awesome yeah i i figured i thought you might be able to, to speak more to that just because uh you, you mentioned that you are a, a retro gamer which is mm -hmm. i feel like that is a a phrase that we don't hear a lot these days um to kind of wear it out on your sleeve like that so i think that's cool oh, i guess you. i'll ask this because i have never heard about this but is the um is the super nintendo the nintendo switch online controller do you know if that's compatible with the game you know, I personally haven't tried it, but let me look oh. into that, actually. So I'll send you an email if I can find out from our QA team if we've tried it. 
Um, I, I never want to recommend awesome. something and be like 100% mm -hmm. heck yeah <laughs> when I, I don't even know. <laughs> that would be yeah, cool well, though, yeah. and I think that's game changing if it is. I, I imagine you could because I mean they they, meant, they went to great lengths to to have it be a a two button game. You know, you've got jump, you've got mm -hmm. attack, and that's kind of all you need. And then the directional pad. So it's I, I imagine that you could play it on the uh, the SNES or the NES style Joy-Con. Yeah. yeah, I've okay. never personally owned the controller, so like I have no idea if that even works with like any other game outside of the uh, online. Same. Mm. I don't know. Scalpers bought them all. <laughs> <laughs> love, I love, it. love that. Yeah, that's oh, that's we gotta we gotta find that out. I'm so fascinated by that uh, by that concept. Mm hmm. Okay, well, guys, I've got another. I got a random yacht club related question to move on to if we're ready. And yeah, hit it, man. All yeah, right, we're gonna dig it. into it. We're, <laughs> Mark already just gave it all away. Um, there are two games from Yacht Club that have been announced, but we haven't heard much about them in quite some time. And those are, of course, Shovel Knight Dig and Pocket Dungeon. Mm -hmm. Celia, I have no idea if you're actually allowed to say anything about this, but what are you allowed to say about the status of those games? And can we have an update <laughs> on those anytime soon? We need one. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I can say, if you're ready for it? Okay, I was, for some reason I was imagining a drum roll. Anyways. I can, <laughs> so, like, tap on the computer now or something. Yeah, like in my head, yeah. like, where you're clicking on the keys. Um, okay, so Shovel Knight Dig and Pocket Dungeon are currently in development right now. Um, so we do not have any updates, but development is going great. Um, thank you for your interest. When we have more things to update you with, we will post it on our social media pages. So keep an eye out. And that's it. So um, <laughs> I, I like I like your I like your marketing director voice. It's very good. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I like how you're you're clearly coming up with all of that off the cuff, and you've never had to say yeah. that before. Um. I've never. Do not search our Twitter history. You know, you won't find it. <laughs> yeah, but what I can say is it looks really cool, and I wish I could tell you more. Oh my gosh, I wish. But once I get it okay, like from like the team, and they're like, okay, Celia, like you can go, you can post the assets, you can do whatever you want then um, I'll be sure to update you guys more. But until then, it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I can see the headlines now. Shovel Knight Dig is really cool. Oh my gosh. You know, that's <laughs> happened. I'm <laughs> not for Dig, but for uh, Cyber Shadow. Someone asked if um, if we were getting a physical release. And like right now, it's it's not in the pipeline. But I put, wow, that would be really awesome. You're like, right now, it's not in the pipeline. You know, if, if that ever changes, like, we'll let you know. But like, someone used it as a headline, like, Yacht Club Games thinks uh, having a physical release would be awesome. And I was like, oh my, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> the most non-news news like god damn it gaming's journalism like do better <laughs> i actually did see that headline though. so yeah <laughs> i never oh, I, was like, I, I was like you... scrolling through and i was like wait what <laughs> campbell i think you wrote that headline am i crazy hey <laughs> <laughs> that's my way of calling you out <laughs> that's my other name please i'm anonymous yeah. over there <laughs> <laughs> cyber Amazing. shadow has no physical release right no nope. it's just like there's absolutely none. I'm so surprised by that, considering that, um, you know, I feel like Shovel Knight's physical did really well. Well, thank you. Um, I think <laughs> just right now, like, we're just kind of, like, it's it's up to, everything's up to Arne. Like, if he tells mm -hmm, us, yeah. like, he, like, tomorrow, he's like, let's do it. We're like, okay, and then I'll announce it. But Arne's in hibernation right now, so yeah. um, he's until in, he's the summer Finland, comes. He's in, he's in his cave, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's doing his bear thing. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, well, unless you guys have any more uh, burning questions, I have one thing to close us out with on an extremely serious note. Oh, oh yes. God. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think I'm... Let me trying to think here. Like, obviously, we all really enjoy this game. I think it's worth mentioning mm -hmm. again that, like, it's good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, I know we, we kind of have talked kind of around it, but I think it's good to explicitly say, like... It is a very good video game. Um, yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say I reviewed earlier last year, um, Bloodstained: Curse of the Moon too, and when it comes to these eight-bit games and these retro throwbacks, I always have like a love-hate relationship with it. But this was another one where I, I really loved Cyber Shadow. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. Yeah. Mark Mark slacked us a couple days ago. I was like, you guys, I think I'm obsessed with this game. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was very good. Yep. I've also been very enthusiastic about it. I was honestly when I started playing, I was a little caught off guard by the level of difficulty. But after that brief level of amount of surprise, I was absolutely hooked into it and. What's amazing is that it is a really hard game, but it's hard for because it's like it's calling back to these classic games and mm -hmm. stripping them of the frustration of the unfair mechanics and level design and everything and just it's 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 like an uncompromising love letter to those games, you know, and it's it feels amazing to play and it's so addictive and that was like the headline of my review as well so uh, just plugging that i guess um but it <laughs> is amazing so we we've all absolutely loved the game for sure. I guess the the this not to open this can of worms, but I guess the the uh, the final thing I want to ask uh, Campbell before we before we move on to your final question would be that uh, so we've talked a lot about how about retro games and you know the the feeling the euphoric feeling that you get when you are able to perform well on that kind of a game. Um, I imagine the entire Yacht Club team, uh, Celia, kind of shares that love. Um, but as, I'm just curious if there's anything that you specifically are. Like what? What do you? Why do you get a charge out of retro games? I'm just so curious. It's a lot of things, to be honest. It's yeah. you know a callback to like my nostalgia of you know like being really little and being like oh what are you know what's a Game Boy or like what's the Super mm -hmm. Nintendo or N64 and like having that like that love of the feeling I don't know it's so many things guys. Yeah, yeah it's true. <laughs> it's like, I mean I know it's you know, I know it's kind of your a... controller for the first time and you're like what is this world and it was just so exciting and new and like the music and it just it just hits really ho like home to you. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a lot of that. And then like for me with retro gaming, like I've, um, like I've played games my whole life and I always go yeah. back to the classics and like before Yacht Club games, like I worked in the retro gaming industry, uh, which is an industry by the way, fun fact. Um, so I like, I worked in that and it just, it's been a passion of mine. So to be able to market something that has such a, like a throwback to like the eight bit classic, like gaming is it's, it's really great. <laughs> Yeah, I, I imagine that's that's a really cool feeling to be able to to come out on the other side of it and be like, ah, yes, I can kind of return to this as an adult mm -hmm. and uh, and talk about it with authority. I think that's very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. All right, Campbell, take it away. All right, yeah. I, we've built up anticipation to this incredibly important question. Um, so I, I want to ask something that the whole world's been dying to know about, especially now after this latest release from Yacht Club Games. What is better, shovels? Or shurikens. Oh, that's that's difficult. That's a very very hard question. <laughs> You're basically asking me like who would win, like mm -hmm. like Superman Ooh. or Goku. Like I don't know. <laughs> or Shadow and Shovel Knight. I mean, I feel like they would join arms, like in that one graphic that we posted, where Shovel Knight is literally holding, uh, <laughs> like it's like this bro stance, holding mm. Shadow's hand. So I feel yeah. like at first they would battle it out, but then they would realize that. They're so much similar to them, like in their hearts and their dedication and yeah. their dedication to justice and shovel justice. So I think I think they would just get along and not fight. Maybe fight something Iro else. <laughs> Ironically, that's actually how uh, Kong versus Godzilla ends too. Is they uh, they lock arms <laughs> and uh, realize that justice is more important than battling. <sighs> it's <Wow>. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Uh, well, I think that's uh, that's all the questions we got uh, mm -hmm. for you, Celia. We, why don't we're going to take a quick little break, and then we're going to come back and quickly chat about some indie games, and then uh, yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll wrap the show from there. So let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Talk about some indie games.
And we're back. Uh, we're going to talk about some uh, some indie games we've all been playing. Uh, Celia, I think we're all desperately curious. Uh, what have you been playing now that the uh, the big marketing push for Cyber Shadow is kind of drawing to a close? Oh, yeah. I've been playing a bunch of stuff, actually. Uh, Night in the Woods is oh. currently... Um, yeah, I'm playing it. It's really fun. And it's, it's so been on good. my list for so long. And I remember everyone raving about it. And I'm like, oh, I'll add that on my list of games to play, which is this really long list that I've <laughs> not written down. And it just kind of just happenstance. And uh, it was on sale during the PlayStation Plus sale thing that was going on. I don't know if it was PlayStation Plus sale, but it was like the holiday sale that they had. Mm -hmm. So um, I picked it up and I've been playing that. And it's not an indie game, but I bought the Jack and Daxter uh, uh, like pack or whatever so that has good. all the games. So, so I've been playing Jack and Daxter. It's real cool. And then I've also been playing House Flipper. People love House Flipper. I've never I've never touched it. Okay, so it's basically like The Sims minus the people. So you don't have to deal with their whole shenanigans. It's literally just house making. And um, yeah, you can you can make some pretty cool houses. There's one that comes with a bunker, and you can make it a uh, yeah an anime fortress. It's pretty cool. <laughs> did you just say anime fortress? I was yeah, say. I did. I, I stuck it in there. I'm um, leaving a couple of details out because it's actually a gun in anime fortress. But... I'm sorry, okay. what? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because I don't know. Like, there's like the Fallout, um, like, like kind of things that you can include in the game, and like you can add a, just a bunch of guns. You could also add a bunch of like anime-looking furniture and stuff. So yeah, it's like a waifu like apocalypse den. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Wow. So that's what I do with my life, guys. Waifu wow. Apocalypse. Den. Waifu Apocalypse. The, the next, the next Yacht Club Games. Waifu Apocalypse. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah. yeah. You guys laugh now, but like when GameStop uh, stock crashes and we're all ruined, <laughs> I'm gonna know how to make a Waifu Apocalypse Den, and you guys are not invited. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, not, yeah. That's honestly fair. <laughs> Tough but fair. Yeah. Wow. Oh my God. What do you think of Night in the Woods? Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Um, it's it's really it's I I expected it kind of to be like kind of like a like a a funny fluff game and mm. then like I got hooked. I don't, I don't know if I want to spoil anything, but like there's this one scene where they're at the party and like the main characters like drunk and then they mm. they reveal something really deep about themselves like their experiences and then like and then continues being like you know random drunk rambles and i like when it, they said that line i was like oh my gosh this game's going to get really deep out of nowhere and then i was yeah. like hooked so yeah it's it's I, really uh, like it. I picked it up during uh, i think it was last summer when itch.io uh, had that that uh, black lives matter bundle mm -hmm. that was going for like it was like a dollar and it was like 50 games or 100 games or something like something crazy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and night in the woods was included in that and so i've, I've been playing it since last summer kind of off and on and it's it's just it, it constantly is is dropping in these very poignant and deep kind of unexpected moments uh sprinkled throughout it's it's a very good very good game yeah i, I have a little bee figurine uh the, the kind of the goth alligator with yeah the i love bee she's yeah, like the yeah, main have... one i'm hanging out with so oh she's the best absolutely good choice. Yeah, I, I, yes. yeah exactly I, I got a little uh I don't know even know what it is, like a little, a little uh, enamel plastic figure thing. It's great. Is it from Fangamer? <laughs> I think it is, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, they I had like them. a little, they had a little Night in the Woods uh, series. Yeah, it is from Fangamer, I remember now, because I bought some uh, some pins as well. Some oh, Hollow so Knight cool. pins. Um, mm. What have I been playing? I've been playing, um, obviously, Cyber Shadow. Um, I've, I have a review coming out. Uh, Mark, you'll be pleased to know that I finally have a review coming out yes. for uh, Tad <laughs> Tadpole Treble Encore. <laughs> Uh, this extremely adorable little rhythm game. Um, so kind of kind of a sneak preview of what I'm writing about. It's this, um, unlike your guitar heroes or your rock bands, um, this is kind of more of a, it's almost a, a runner. It's almost an endless runner, but it's a rhythm game where you play this little adorable tadpole um, and you're, you're swimming through the level. Uh, you're obviously collecting bubbles and, uh, you know, tapping your, swinging your tail to the beat and uh these amazing original songs um t oh my gosh what a what a great adorable little music game uh the art is incredible uh all kinds of different genres represented i i never thought that i needed like a western themed uh rhythm section it's great it's just it's Wait, extremely hold good. on a western <laughs> yeah dude like there's <laughs> a part where fish. Yeah, well, you're, you're, you're kind of, you're this little tadpole, so you're kind of going from river to river to river, 
and one of the rivers runs through a desert. So of oh, course, okay. like the, I think, I don't know if they're snails or uh, there's some kind of like creature, maybe they're, they're probably vultures like, that are kind of like, what are you doing out here, little tadpole? Well, let me sing you a song <laughs> as you, like, it's great. Uh, it's called Thunder Creek. I encourage all of you to look up Thunder Creek Tadpole Treble on YouTube and you will be humming along within seconds. It's extremely good. Um, so yeah, I'll, that's kind of what I've been playing over the weekend. Uh, and I also had a review come out for for Tohu, which I think I'm pronouncing correctly, which is a point-and-click adventure uh, mm -hmm. with uh, music by the guy who did the music for Hollow Knight. Oh, um, nice. So that was a great uh, experience as well. So that's kind of the ones that have been taking up most of my time lately. Uh, what about you guys? I have not been able to play, like, any indies lately. I've been yep. so close, though, to biting the bullet on Hades. Dude. Uh, I'm do getting it. closer every day. <laughs> do it. Just do it. What, at this point, what are you, what are you waiting on? I don't know. I'm just trying to get through my backlog, and I know if I add like uh, another title. Oh yeah, yeah. You can't add there. Hades if you if you're trying to get through a backlog, like you can't add Hades to that because that's yeah. that's. And now I have like more this. like. <laughs> now I have more like hey, guilty purchases. We talked about guys, this this morning, Cameron. Oh, no, go, go, you go guys ahead, are go being ahead. responsive. Like you guys are being responsible. <laughs> no, buy it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna play your your backlog anyway? Come on. What's Ooh, one more game? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, listen, she's Cam. she's not she's not wrong. Yeah, Mark, like we all know, we're not gonna play that backlog. Like, let's. Yes, <laughs> get another. It's fine. Still, still haven't finished the final boss of Luigi's Mansion Three. And then Cameron, we talked about this this morning, but mm -hmm. um, Concrete Genie was announced for PS uh, Plus. And then meanwhile, yeah. I bought Concrete Genie during Black Friday, but then <laughs> the game the month before was uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and I also bought that on Black Friday. <laughs> oh, see, Mark, that's there's your problem. I I, I always say this, uh, and like I mean this completely sincerely. Um, unless I'm gonna play the game that day, like I don't buy it. Do you know what I mean? So it's like yeah. unless you're gonna play well, Hades. It was such tonight. a good deal. I got them both for like five dollars. Well, listen, <laughs> yeah, that and, and, listen it's, deal. that's a pretty good deal. Okay, fair, fair enough, fair enough. That's funny. I will. I'll, uh, I'll get to Hades though, and then we'll, we'll get do to another. Hades. We'll do the quintrillionth um, Hades. Hades episode cast. Of this yeah, podcast. we've. Uh, <laughs> I gotta say. Yeah, yeah, Celia. I know you, you. Obviously, first time on this show, but uh, we basically have talked about Hades nonstop since this came out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm not it's even yeah. kidding. It's been be... on every week. Every week we've talked about it. Th then been, what do you in... talk about if you haven't played it yet? We we talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, this is the conversation that we have. Oh, okay. I just sort of remain funny. silent in the corner as everyone lashes out <laughs> over if they've um, gotten out of the dungeon or not. <laughs> the dungeon? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> it's fine. Let it, leave him be. Yeah. Leave yeah. him be. Campbell, what about you? What have you been playing, man? <laughs> well, you know, I have been playing Hades a lot lately. So, you know, uh -huh. like one of the... Hey. Like one of the cool kids in the neighborhood, you know, I've been playing Hades a lot. I'm getting really good at it. Um, I've escaped several times at this point. I want to slam pretty proud of myself for that. Um, and it's it's even worse. I thought that if I finished uh, or quote unquote finished the game, I wouldn't need to come back to it more. But no, now I need to keep playing even more and see if I can beat my records and all that kind of stuff. But uh, a new game that I've been playing is one that hasn't even been released yet at the time of this recording. Um, by the time this show comes out, my review should be live on the site. It's Olea uh, from Devolver oh. Digital, which is really great. I've talked about it a little bit before um, on the show in the past, but now that i finished the game, uh, the, written up the review, my impressions have only gotten better for it. It starts out as just as like this simple action platformer, straightforward, fight your way to the end, but then as you keep playing, it keeps evolving into so many different things. It has these elements of atmospheric storytelling, um, puzzle solving, um, exploration. It becomes almost like non-linear at times even, and the story gets interesting as well. There's just a lot about this game that really caught me off guard as I was playing it. So I've really been enjoying finishing that one up. So, yeah. Yeah, I love getting caught off guard uh by a game and not, not kind of to bring it back around to, to cyber shadow like i was expecting it to be like really solid but i was caught off guard by a lot of stuff in that game so i love when a game like surprises you in, in that way i think that's very cool mm -hmm. absolutely cyber shadow was surprising in so many ways and all, all of course they were all surprising in good ways <laughs> um but it's a really great how it always like evolves catches you off guard you know much like how Aaliyah does as well so yeah well there you go yeah. oh cameron um, we do have a major update 
I have requested a code for Alpaca Ball All Star from Ooh, the developer. Yes, yes. Wait, get time that out. What alpaca. is Alpaca Pawn? Alpaca Ball All Star is like if someone took Super Mario um, Strikers Charged and made it with alpacas. And it's on Switch. <laughs> I love alpacas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, I have like a collection. And they're all like so wait, wait, hold, costumes. Wait, hold on, hold on. Celia, you have it you have a collect finish that sentence. I have a collection of alpacas. Um so not real ones, unfortunately. I, I was gonna ask. <laughs> yeah, they're they're gonna be in my waifu vault, don't worry. Oh, um, there you so go. Okay, remember cool. when um like at anime conventions, like the alpaca plushy things were like really popular? Mm-hmm. Do you guys remember that? I remember that because oh, I have course. them all. Um, yeah, we, all, we all just we all just mm-hmm, as if we knew. None of us know. Let's be honest. <laughs> you're so cute. Okay, I'm. Um, yeah, they're really cute, and I like alpacas. And so, um, yeah, I'm excited about this game now. I have an alpaca on my shelf. It's like a little um, plush one, but it's made mm-hmm. of real alpaca fur. Oh whoa! That's Mine are not. Yeah, you're you're ready for this game. <laughs> like a soccer ball or something. I was gonna say, you know, you can yes. start like staging alpaca ball with that yeah. that if, stuff. When yeah. when eventually when I do play the game, I'll go to my local alpaca farm and I'll take a picture in front of the alpaca playing the game. Mm. That's good. This is good. This is excellent. Yeah, Mark, <laughs> let me know if you get that and I'll play it with you. Let's, I would I would one hundred percent play alpaca ball. Sure, I'll I'll pick that up too, why not? Let's just <laughs> have an yeah, alpaca so are, ball. Are you are you party. in or what? Yeah, I'm already we'll, in. I don't know where you we'll guys are. Pack of all. Grant that they have made a, uh, a new Mario Strikers. This will this will have to this will have to tide us over until then. I mean, who needs um, Mario Strikers though? In that case, I mean, yeah, alpacas exactly. are better than everything alpacas. else. Yeah, this this is the superior version. It feels like mm-hmm. for sure. Um, well. I mean, it feels like a good note to end on to me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Um, Celia Schilling, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. I had a lot of fun. This this was fun. This was a really great time. And Cyber Shadow, it's out now. It's on everything. Fantastic game. Uh, Yacht Club has done it again. Um, and, of course, congrats to Arne and Enrique uh, for, for helping get this game out the door. It's It's a really great accomplishment. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll I guess we'll wrap it up. Um, I've been your host, Cameron Daxon. You can find me on my brand new Twitter that I just made today uh, at Action Daxon with an X. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yes, I finally joined Twitter. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, so you can. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 hate, I hate it so much. I hate it so much, you guys. It's oh god, it's so bad. Um, and you can Welcome find to some. The void. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's what it feels like. Uh, you can find uh, some of my writing over at GoombaStop.com. Campbell, where can people find you on the internet? Um, you can find me on Twitter at my, as always, pretentious handle at CampbellSGill, uppercase CSG. The uppercase middle initial S is extremely important. Um, and of course, you can find my games writing on GoombaStop.com. I've got a review of Cyber Shadow, review of Olea that should be up by the time this is out. And I've also got some other really cool developer interviews and reviews coming out on the near horizon. So please keep an eye out for that. Absolutely. And uh, Mark, what about you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram at, uh, at the Markel, And that's Mark with a C and Cal with a K. And then, of course, you can find all my writing at GoombaStomp.com. I am currently doing a weekly column for WandaVision. So if you are watching the show and you have thoughts, you know, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and Celia, what about you? Where can people find you on the internet? If there's anything you want to plug? Yeah, of course. Okay, I have a bunch of things, so uh, warning, it's going to be a long list. Okay, that's, so that's fine. We are you here can for it. find Yeah, you can find us on social media for Yacht Club Games. So all of our handles is at Yacht Club Games. So that can be on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube, on uh, Twitch, on Instagram. We have an Instagram now. Go follow it. Um, but in addition to Yacht Club Games, uh, the creator of Cyber Shadow, Arne, um, his is Mecha School, and that's Mecha with a K. Um, and uh, you can also find Enrique, the composer, and he is Pentadrangle. Um, so you can find him on Twitter as well. And then personally, my Twitter is uh, Celia B, but there's three E's at the end. So there you go. <laughs> I followed all of those things right now. Perfect. Um, <laughs> nicely done. Uh, 
Thank you again so much for joining us, Celia. This was a really what a what a pleasure of a conversation. This was great. Um, so <laughs> thanks so much for uh, for listening, guys. Uh, don't forget to check out GoombaStomp.com. You can follow the podcast at at N Express Nintendo, and you can get horse download us, rate, review us, all that stuff. We're on everything. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, all that good stuff, Spotify. So, yeah, thanks so much for listening. We'll catch you next time. Uh, be safe, and everybody go buy Cyber Shadow. Bye.